back with another solo lane guide today we're going to be going over builds as of 9.6 keep in mind that bobble is still disabled in game because it's bugged before there was a bug that allowed you to go over 60 percent cdr even up to 100 percent cdr maybe uh loyal can put the clip of sam marbeck running around as cam with 100 percent cdr it's hilarious <laughs> holy <laughs> fuck, bro <laughs> Oh my fucking god, dude. I'm going bat mode right now, dude. But yeah, today we're just going to be going over the builds. I'm going to show you guys every viable build, why the builds are the way they are right now, and what makes the characters meta because of that. Um, and just talk about the items and everything like that so you know exactly what to be doing as of 9.6 in your ranked games or in your casuals just so you can have a good time in the soul lane. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Um, I did make a 9.5 or maybe not 9.5, but I just made a top five ranked soul lane characters about a month ago. Uh, but much like the pitch of my voice in the 10th grade, things are always changing. So I constantly need to be updating this and making sure you guys are on the right path when it comes to building. So without further ado, let's just get into it. I'm going to start with the Guardian tab. So the first build I'm going to show you is a build that you can go on every single Guardian in the game if you want to play them in the soul lane. I would say that right now, the top Guardians are probably like Cthulhu, Ardeo, uh, and then maybe a bit of a drop off into like Jington, Sobek, Cerberus, Kabrakin. Uh, but you know, especially in your casual games, you can probably make any Guardian work, to be honest. So... I'm just going to click on RDO. This isn't exactly like the exact build you need to go on RDO every single game, but I'm just showing you guys a general Guardian build that's good right now. So one thing that I think everybody can agree on is that Conduit is a must on every single Guardian. It's so strong. I have no idea what they did with this item. Before, they, they made that one patch that nerfed a bunch of starter items because they were really strong, and then now Conduit is just like much better than the other ones in solo lane just because it, it does so much damage with the passive to camps and stuff it just it allows you to secure totems really easy i mean if you walk over to the totem with uh the 20 stacks of conduit and hit it at the the first totem respawn you can get it over most warriors and high pressure assassins and stuff like that it's just insane but also i'm gonna click off rdo because she keeps making noises with that we'll go to somebody that makes less noise maybe aries um and aries is he's not the most viable civilian right now but you get the point this is just a guardian build in general so yeah conduit um you're gonna be starting conduit with a bunch of pots or you can go tier one warlocks really up to you um i would say that if you're not too comfortable as on the character or maybe it's a rough matchup just go a bunch of pots instead of going the actual tier one warlocks but you can also go uh, a chalice with these pots if you don't go the warlocks but then you are going to rush into that warlocks into a breastplate if you're against a physical if you're against a magical then go the genjis there but you know do it whatever you need to and then go the other one here into a spirit row this is a pretty standard build you guys have seen this quite a bit late game it kind of depends on what you need if they have a lot of crit go a spectral armor perhaps here i'll put that all the uh, options for your last item down here um go to spectral armor mid guardian still really nice i like that item a lot magi's glyph is actually pretty nice right now and that's something you should definitely consider um i like both of these this one's for a little bit more damage when you go revenge and then shelter is to help CC mean your teammates. If you're sticking with your backline, maybe you go shelter. If you're trying to run at them, then shelter or uh, revenge is also pretty nice. Um, but also, maybe you're ahead. Ethereal is very good on a lot of guardians as well. So something to consider. And of course, upgrade your gem or your conduit gem into gem of focus. And this is a very strong build on pretty much every guardian right now. So I highly recommend going this. This is uh, definitely something to get away with. Um, but another thing you can do right now is go into that conduit and go tier one Pythags. So this is sort of something I was messing around with a bit previously but they actually buff pythags and now has 10 cooldown instead of 10 pen and 50 more health it's a very strong item right now and the cool part about this right is you actually get five pots so you can get four health pots one multi just for like maybe you fight at that level two or level three wave you want to fight into the wave you want to make sure you have that multi pot ticking so you can take some of that archer damage but the cool thing about pythags is like kind of like a budget warlocks without the prem but it gives you an aura to your team that's really useful for them um, and the cool part, again, is that it gives cooldown now, so you don't necessarily need to go straight into a breastplate here. You can get away with something maybe a little bit more useful for the team comp. Say they have a lot of healing on their team. I like to go Contagion right now, um, and healing's pretty prevalent in most games, so I'll throw that Contagion down there into a Genji's. I do still like to go a little bit more CDR to uh, combo with that Pythax. You're going to get that Gemma Focus late game, and it's kind of the same situation as the previous build where you just need to situationally build for that game. Um, I'll throw them in again. Spectral, always good. If they have crit, I mean, Guardian, good. If they have a lot of auto attackers, especially auto attack jungles, which are pretty prevalent right now with like Nemesis, you know, Osiris, Erling, stuff like that. Uh, Jade Emperor is still very strong on Guardian, so you can honestly go that. 
Um, but yeah, that, that's basically it for the uh, two Guardian builds. And the last Guardian build I want to show you that's kind of exclusive to like a Kabrakin type character, or just a character that can actually dive really hard and do a ton of damage, um, which is basically just Kabrakin. I messed around with it a little bit on Cerberus. Maybe another character that could get away with this is maybe Atlas, but you know, maybe just exclusive to these characters is actually a, a book build. So you go Conduit again, kind of similar. If you're in a rough matchup, go Tier 1 Breastplate here. If you're in a fine matchup, you're going to get pressure over them. Maybe they're a guardian as well, so you don't really have to worry that much. Then you can kind of get away with just going tier one book here, actually, and getting three pots. That's one negative. Uh, and most of these builds, you're going to see them going teleport. Teleport's just really meta right now and very, very strong. Um, in any situation where you need to have beads, go bead second because they have a lot of CC and they're going to try and kill their, your front line, which is you. Or if they don't have a lot of CC, then you can consider going blink. But usually that's just the three relics you want to have in uh, most scenarios right now. And the thing is, you can get away with having beads on these characters just because you can kind of play in that middle of the team fight area as a guardian, even on Kabrakin, and it's still easy for you to get to their back line. Um, so what I go right now is I go actually Book of Thoth into a Breastplate. This is a very strong combo into Book of the Dead. You go these items because they give you a bunch of mana, which make your Book of the Dead have a huge shield. It gives you a ton of damage as well because Book of Thoth mana converts to power, and it's just very, very nice. Then I like to go usually either a Void Stone here, especially if I'm ahead because I just start one-shotting with this Void Stone. It gives me some percent pen for their carries, which are pretty tanky right now with Aura items and the fact that everyone is tankier after 9.5. But if you don't really want to go that, you can consider going an actual magical defense item, like a or truly tanky one, like a Pestilence or something. Um, and then I'll like go into the Spirit Robe and, of course, upgrade into Gem of Focus. Trust me, with just these mana items that you have and the Book of Thoth, you have plenty of damage. You're going to hit very, very hard. And hopefully at this point in the game with your Gem of Focus and all this power and all this tankiness, you have a Fire Giant. You're actually going to be around 600 power with all these items in your Book of Thoth stack, which is just crazy to think about for your Guardian build. So this is the third Guardian build that I would like to show you. Again, I recommend the other ones a little bit more right now, but definitely something you can consider. And as always, you don't even need to go to the Pythags or the Warlocks. You can just go straight tank items. But I think for ranked games, especially if you're trying to carry these teammates, you want to have a little bit of power in your build. So those items go a long way. So that's the Guardian meta right now in the solo lane. Coming up next is basically, this is actually going to be pretty easy. The standard warrior and kind of standard assassin build right now. It's pretty simple. I'm not going to lie. So we're just going to go ahead and click on, I'm just going to click on King Arthur. Um, so either you're going Bluestone or Destal. There are situations where you can go Sigil. I highly recommend Sigil on, let me go look real quick. I highly recommend it on like a Robin, maybe even like a Kukulin, um, a little bit on Mulan, probably not on Osiris or basically any other character here. The problem with Sigil is you're mana hungry with it, it has no health sustain on it. And, uh, you know, if somebody goes Destal or Bluestone against you, they're going to win the lane a lot harder. And a lot of times that will win you the game. But I do recommend if a lot of your ranked games are going into the late game, then you could try and get away with going Sigil because it's just very, very strong late game. So if you're noticing that every single of your ranked games doesn't really matter when the first like 10 to 15 minutes and the lane doesn't matter, everybody just doesn't know what they're doing. You get to that late game st like scenario every single time, then go Sigil and you'll probably carry team fights. But like I said, for the most part, um, you're either going to be going Bluestone or Destal. I recommend Bluestone on like Kukulin, Wukong, King Arthur, um, Achilles, characters like this. And then Destal on characters like Osiris, Bologna, Amaterasu, yada, yada, yada. Um, so for the characters that need sustain right away, especially if you're not going Destal, you want to have Sovereignty. A character like this is Arthur, Kukulin. You know, they don't have sustain in their kits. So you want to have that Sov right away for the HP 5. Um, oh, I should probably show you the start first. But you go Tier 1 Sov. Or just a bunch of uh, health pots and a chalice, you can do that, but this is pretty standard as well. And then, of course, go teleport, which is right here. Um, you can go that teleport, and then, of course, go the sovereignty like I was talking about. Straight into that glad shield. Once you have these two items, physicals cannot fight around you. If they have a physical jungler and a physical soul laner, you are so strong at this point. You do a lot of damage. You are very, very tanky. But the one problem you have is that you're mana hungry, so you need to go into that Genji's. Gives you some CDR as well, which combos well with the glad shield and the characters you're building this on. Into a spirit robe. Spirit robe is one of the best tank items in the game right now. It was so sad when it was disabled uh, like a month ago, and it was just out of the game for a while. I was like, us tanks need this item right now. Um, and then, of course, upgrade bluestone into bluestone. Brooch, almost always, there's very rare scenarios where you go the redstone. Brooch just does so much damage, as well as the fact that after 9.5, people have higher health pulses. So this does even more damage. It's even better now. And redstone only gets value when there's a lot of auto attackers in the game. So maybe if they have like a Kali jungle, an ADC mid, you know, stuff like that, multiple auto attackers you want to worry about, maybe go redstone. But don't do it on Arthur. Always go Brooch on Archer, but maybe redstone on the other bluestone characters. Um, and then last item kind of depends. You know, if you're in a pretty good spot, you feel tanky enough. I actually like going a Heart Seeker here. Does a lot of damage, especially on a character like Arthur. But of course, the same items that you would go on a Guardian in that late game scenario are still going to be good here. If they have a lot of crit, go Spectral. 
a lot of auto attackers made guardian works uh, maybe they have like double mage and you want to be able to die without getting uh owned bulwark of hope is very very strong on these characters as well uh, so this is pretty much the standard blue stone build but it's kind of the exact same for physical or for uh, auto attackers that's why i said this builds are kind of easy so let me go show you real quick let's just click on Bologna. it's basically the exact same thing the only difference is that you're actually be rushing instead of rushing sovereignty you're gonna be getting it second because you get enough sustain from one of these characters kits and plus the fact that you have death toll death toll gives you lots of sustain so you can actually get away with going tier one berserkers or tier one glad shield whatever you want to say with four health pots you can also go three health pots and one multi but i usually just go four health pots Usually these characters are pretty safe in lane. The Destal characters, they're very hard to poke out. Very, very strong. I actually think Berserkers is pretty bad right now. Um, I think Glad Shield is much better, and that's why these ability-based characters are a lot more uh, prevalent right now. Except for Osiris, because he can get away with going Glad Shield. You can actually go Glad Shield on Bologna. I really don't think it's that bad. But um, I will say that uh, Berserkers has taken uh, a bit of a step down. And I think that's partly reflected in the meta and what characters are strong right now but nonetheless i think berserkers is still definitely viable and these characters are still strong with this build it's basically the exact same thing as before insect except instead of going genjis because you're playing an auto attack character you oni hunters into a spirit robe this tankiness build this mid build that you're seeing a lot that we're going to keep talking about um and then of course go death toll upgrade and same situation as before if they have crit spectral is nice they have a lot of auto attacking mid guardian um, if you're really ahead, I actually recommend going like a stone cutting or even right now an executioner, which I think is actually pretty strong on uh, warrior solos right now because you can go the glyph, the heavy executioner. You're not going to have a ton of attack speed in your build anyway, so you want to be going into this heavy executioner and it allows you to trade with their tanks very, very well, like 36% pen, which is just insane after two autos. Um, also, keep in mind, you can also go shoguns here. That's definitely viable, but if you want more of that mid build, and you know, it's really up to you. I probably will go shoguns in a lot of my games, especially if I'm ahead, but... You know, this is the auto attack build, very similar to the build I just showed you. And of course, on a character like Osiris, you go this exact same build, except instead of going Berserkers, because you have so much poke and range, uh, you go Glad Shield, and it's really, really strong. Now, the other build I'm going to show you on some Warriors, it's very, very viable, especially on some Assassins like Robin, Ratatasker. I'll go ahead and show you on Rat, because I think Rat's really strong right now. So you're going to be starting with your Tier 1 Acorn and a Bluestone. Wait, why is it up here? Well, let me click up there, whatever. Tier 1 Acorn, Blue Stone. This is very specific to Rat when it comes to the, the Acorn, but everything else is pretty much the same when it goes throughout the build. Go for Health Pots and your TP. So you're going to be rushing into your Acorn. That doesn't really matter that much for the other builds because I'm trying to show you guys just Assassins in general. But what does matter is going into a Soul Eater, Glad Shield, and then just full mitts from here. You need mana at this point, so you want to have the Oni Hunters. Into a Spirit Robe, into um, Upgraded Blue Stone Brooch. And then, of course, on Rat, you're not going to... This is just your full build because you're going to have the Acorn here. But on the other characters, you could uh, have, like, a Spectral there. Uh, Mid Guardian, like I said before. Uh, maybe even the Magi's Glyph, um, if you really want that. Which I think you should definitely mess around with because I think it's pretty strong. Both options are. And this is just such a strong build right now. I usually just go TP Beads on a lot of these Assassins. Robin, you can get away with TP Blink just because he has so much immunity in his kit and so much dive with that. Chase down potential. Um... But yeah, this build is insane. I think it's actually one of the few ways to feel tanky late game uh, in these past few years of Smite. And yeah, I definitely highly recommend it on most of your Assassins. Even some Warriors I would go it on. Um, maybe like a, uh, see like a Nike Mulan I've been going it on, except I've been going Sigil on her and then going into that. that uh, I'll just go ahead and show you guys. Sigil or Seagull as like we like to call it on this channel. And we go Tier 1 Soul Eater. Go four health pots, one multi. You can get five pots with this start. TP, of course, you go into that Soul Eater. I think this build is so strong late game, especially on a character like Mulan. You go the same route. Everything's basically the same. Spirit Robe. Except you, instead of having Blue Stone, you'll go into Sigil upgrade. And you go Sigil of the Old Guard. Infused Sigil is decent, but just the, the mitigations you get from this are just absolutely insane. It makes you so tanky late game, and I think it's much more strong. Although Infused Sigil is strong, don't get me wrong. I think... Uh, this one's just a little bit better um, in that scenario. And then, of course, whatever you need in that last time, like I said. Even Nemean, I think, is pretty strong, especially with the mid build, just because it gives your first three uh, autos a ton of mitigations when you're diving that backline, and you will have three stacks of it with the, the items here. So something you can go on Mulan and some other um, assassins in the soul lane, like Pele, I recommend that on. Um, and basically, only in their build that we really need to go over is just like a full damage build, and it's something you probably build on like a Kamazot or a Bastet. 
basically full damage. Um, you know, if you want to go pure full damage, just basically just go a jungle build with maces and everything like that. But mostly damage is what I mean. You go into a blue stone. You go into a soul eater. Except on camo, I'd probably go warrior's axe. Um, four health pots. And most of the time I'll go TP, but you can get away with just going beads because it's really easy for you to get back in the lane. Stay in lane with the sustain from these items in this character. Um, and same thing with camazots. But sometimes you even want to rush that transcendence. But you go ahead into Soul Eater Transcendence and then a Glad Shield. The thing about Glad Shield is that you need prots to make it do damage, but it's still just really good base stats. I mean, just look at it 20, 400 gold, 20 power, 40 prot, 250 health, 10% cooldown. And of course, the next item you're going to get is going to give you plenty of protections to help your Glad Shield. And it's going to be Spirit Robe. And then, last item, I like to go Heart Seeker or Erendite. Um, Heart Seeker is just really strong right now with increased health pools. And it combos well with the Bluestone Brooch. So, your ability of uh, procs are going to be very, very hard hitting. And you're going to do a lot of health damage anyway. And this would be like, you go this build on like uh, Bastet, Kama, except with Kama, I'd probably go Axe. Cleo is even good, is even good with that build. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. And then of course, I guess last but not least, we go to the Mages, Mage tab. Basically the same thing applies to these characters. You just kind of want to be going full CDR and full mitt. Um, Baron is still definitely a viable soul laner, except instead of going Conduit like every other Guardian in the game, and probably every other Mage, you actually want to be going Boombas. So you still want to be getting that Boombas for the late game. It's just way too strong on him still. And you just go Boombas, Tier 1 Warlocks. And you get a Brew and two Health Pots, I believe, is how much you can actually afford. There it is. And then go into that Warlock. Same thing as the Guardians, basically, except I would recommend maybe valuing uh, Ethereal a little bit stronger on this character. And valuing it a little bit more. So you go Spirit Robe and then into Ethereal. And then go your Boombas. And you are so strong with this build late game. And of course, have TP beads most of the time. They don't have a lot of CC. Try and maybe consider a sprint. Sprint's really good with Baron. Just combo as well with his two and run people down, help your team out. And you can also sprint your own ult to chase people down. Um, and yeah, the other character maybe is like a Hades. Zhang might be viable right now. I haven't really been able to test him that much, but I don't think the claw is that good in Solane because it requires you to build a decent amount of power. And your job as a Solane is usually to be pretty tanky. Now, don't get me wrong, Zhang is still pretty tanky with the power build just because of the. The buffs they gave him and he was already pretty tanky before but we'll have to mess around with him a bit more before i can show you guys the the set build on him but if i were to mess around it'd probably be like a pythags into the bancroft's claw um so you can take that information do with it what you will same thing with hades as before you want to go boombas like the same exact thing as baron except you don't want to go the boombas early on you just want to have tier two bancroft so instead of having warlocks on this character you're going to have bancroft go to health pots and tp and there it is and of course, rush into that with Bane Cross. If you're against a physical, go straight into that press plate. Into it. Oni Hunters actually is what I'd go on him. I don't really value the Genjis that much in a team fight. It's still very strong and it helps with his, his ult cooldowns and everything like that. But I just like the mitigations that you get from it with Spirit Robe and the fact that his ult also gets mitigations. Um, and then go Boombas, of course, here. That's usually when you're going to be buying it. Met, like I said, if your games are going into late game a lot of the time, then I do recommend Boombas very, very much. It's definitely very, very strong still, even though it doesn't work on ultimates anymore. And of course, whatever you need in that last item, it's a very situational all of the time. Um, but I end up mostly going Nemi and Spectral just to help deal with their ADC. And you're going to be very, very tanky with this build, and it's still very strong. And yeah, uh, I definitely recommend it. But basically, that's how you build every character in the game right now. Um, what you notice, for the most part, is mitigations are very, very important. Like I said, it's one of the few ways to feel tanky in the late game these days. And um, also, what you notice is that... You know, some of these bruiser builds with glad shield or like soul eater plus glad shield, you actually are pretty threatening with your, your damage still. You know, I think they tried to, to fix that in 9.5 or whatever they wanted to do. But once they made glad shield as strong as it is and the fact that mitigations are really strong and those two things combined, the fact that you can just do a lot of damage with tankiness, it's just, uh, you know, it's actually been pretty fun for soul laners lately, even in the late game. So that's how you build everybody right now. If you have any questions, let me know, know down in the comments and uh, let me know what's working for you guys. And uh, yeah, try out these builds. Hopefully you have some success with them. I'm sure you will if you play normally. Don't play like a, a noob. <laughs> uh, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, comment if you have any questions. And yeah, stay safe and healthy as always. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.